Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Okay, today's video is, uh, is my personal confession. Um, it, there, there's been there's been talk. Uh, there was actually a little bit of uh, banter on the interweb uh, in regards to my videos. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this. We're gonna give it a shot. From Foamy Joe questioning, and of course the phone shuts off. Anyway, from Foamy Joe, did anyone see the purple foam on the top of his, let's say, mason jars? On that shelf, yes, that was foam. Don't let him fool anyone. Long live the foam. That was from Joe, Foamy Joe. So anyway, I, I need to actually make a confession that I am a recovering foamaholic. Uh, I've actually uh, been partaking of, of the uh, of the evil foam for many years, um, many builds, uh, many failures with foam. Uh, it's a dangerous drug, kids. Stay away from the foam. So anyway, uh, here's a here's here's a way I started with foam. Uh, back in uh, the winter of 2002, I decided to start flying indoors uh, at a big golf dome, and there was not that much in the way of uh, planes that were designed for flying indoors. So most people had to make their own. Um, now, granted, they weren't that pretty looking, but they all flew, which is you know that's why you call them a plane because they fly. Um, they don't fly, they're called a car. Anyway, uh, I was down in Elk Grove Village with a bunch of friends and uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Glenn, we were flying these little planes and they were called mini pinks because they were planes that were made out of pink foam. Basically three quarter inch flat board foam and uh, uh, we used that. We used um, foam plates that we actually were buying over Jewel uh, for the actual control surfaces, and the, the little planes flew nice. And that was that was before the day when you were actually able to get uh, uh, brushless motors. We actually used uh, um, little brushed motors with gear reduction uh, that came from. Um, If I think of the name of the company, I'll let you know uh, during the video. Um, anyway, it was, uh, it flew great. And so most people just started throwing those together. So what we ended up doing is the guy that we got the couple little mini pinks from, he decided he actually wanted to get away from making them because he was afraid he was going to get sued. So he gave the designs to Glenn and then me and Glenn decided to go ahead and start manufacturing them and sell them and and we we did it for one reason we didn't do it to make money we did it all we wanted to do is we wanted to at least recoup the money that it put out to go buy the foam um, and uh, time to actually make the kits um, and we didn't really care about that it was pretty much we did it to actually try to help build the indoor community so we can get more people to come to fly indoors because it's Everybody that's learned how to fly outdoors, the outdoors gives you a lot of room to make mistakes. The indoors doesn't because not only are there four walls, there's also a ceiling too. So what it does is it, it actually become a better pilot flying indoors because when you actually have boundaries like that, it, it makes flying outdoors, um, I don't want to say easy, but compared to indoors, yes, it's easy. So anyway, so what so what we've done, I'm, I'm going to be putting pictures in with this. So you're going to see pictures of, of people, pictures of planes. Uh, the whole thing started off, we were down in Elk Grove Village. And uh, uh, me, Glenn, and a couple other guys decided to, to go run off. And, uh, and when we were done, run over to McDonald's, get a cup of coffee. And um, I was trying to figure out the best way to power an actual... Uh, it's... You, you'll see it soon. You'll see it soon. Um, an actual wing cutter, and and how to go about m making forms to cut wings. 
uh, and the person who was there uh, grabbing coffee with us was, was Dell, the mad scientist. Dell. Um, and uh, <laughs> he either worked for Northrop or, or Lockheed. I, I think it was Lockheed. I could be wrong. It might have been Northrop. Anyway, regardless, uh, uh, he, he was an actual engineer. And uh, he had a, he was a, a, a degree in physics and guy was brilliantly smart. If he's still with us, he's still brilliantly smart. He actually, while we we're sitting at the table, he actually th threw me just pretty much just actually told me to run over to Radio Shack, which is no longer here, Radio Shack, and actually threw out a couple product part numbers and told me exactly what to get. To build the actual power supply for this, and uh, if I could explain to you exactly how that power supply works, I, I could not have to take it out and look at. It. But it's basically it's, it's 110 into I think a 12 volt transformer. Um, I have to tear it apart to take a look. Anyway, um, it, it, it's it, it looks rudimentary, but it works. So I'll do that. But anyway, here's it's. The, the first plane that, that I actually took the time to draw the plans to actually cut the fuselage, cut the wings, went out do the whole testing on it, was an Eindecker. So that's where my disease in the use of foam really started was the Eindecker. From the Eindecker, we went to the uh, Stearman. Uh, from the Stearman, I gotta get this right, from the Stearman it went over to the SE5A. And then from the SE5A it went to the actual Fokker DR, uh, excuse me, the Fokker DR1 uh, triplane. And it, uh, it, it got to the point where I'd actually tried to build a, uh, an actual uh, pits. And that plane, although it looked beautiful and I had people that actually wanted to put orders in on it, um, didn't have one single good flight on it. We tried to figure out. I had a couple other guys that had been building planes for years. We all tried to figure out exactly what the problem with that plane was and we couldn't figure it out with it. So even though I've got all the forms still uh, up in the closet, um, that plane is, that one got scrapped. I pulled everything off it to put another plane. I tried a rear wind cloudster that, uh, that was, although it looked beautiful, it, it, it turned very nicely to the right, uh, but it turned very poorly to the left. And when you turned poorly to the left and you got it into that bank turn, it took probably about 150 to 200 feet to get it to come out of that turn. So, so that plane, um, I was going to put ailerons on it, and then I uh, inadvertently uh, made a mistake cutting the actual wings because um, I tried to do a quick rod on it. So I just scrapped that plane too. Um, there was a couple other little things that I started doing. Uh, I started trying to do some 3D stuff out of foam. I ended up doing uh, a Yak, a, a Cap 232, and those were made out of flat. I don't have any pictures of some of those planes, but everything that I actually had and took pictures of, you'll see those. Now, the, the, the first, pretty much, what ended up causing me to get out of actually <laughs> spending so much time with foam was an intervention. Uh, I was actually out at the field one day, crashed one of my foamies, and I was actually sitting on the ground tearing my hair out. And, uh, oh, you thought that this was natural selection? No, I did this myself. Uh, so anyway, I'm sitting there tearing my hair out, and uh, somebody taps me on the shoulder, and it's Larry DeRubo, and he goes, hey, you know what? He goes, you got a problem, we need to get you away from the foam. You got to get away from the foam. So he ended up uh, uh, giving me a set of plans for a little plane called a Skeeter. Um, there was a, it was a balsa plane with plastic covering 
uh, 3D, it's kind of what I was looking for. And uh, he actually showed me the process of how to go, just from a set of plants, how to go through, how to cut all the ribs because it wasn't a candy bar wing. The ribs, they actually tapered down. Uh, so that was my first foray into actually building uh, uh, from an actual set of plants because I'd never done that before. So, you know, that was, that was, that was what got me away from foam and into doing wood models. Um, and, and, and it's not, and it's not, and it's not that wooden models fly better than foam, because, you know, it's just, just as long as, just as long as the foam airplanes have the same lift characteristics, the same, you know, power characteristics that you need for flight, you get these things up in the air. And it's some of the foamies, because I still have foamies, and I'm, I'm never going to get rid of foamies, um, some of the planes fly great. I actually have, uh, the Hobby King Tundra which to this day I will tell you that if, 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 if they're still putting it out and I think they're still going to be releasing it, um, get one. It's the best foam fly, the best foamy I've ever flown in my life and I, I'll fly that one till it's, till it's gone. Um, that's a great plane. But anyway, um, the, uh, uh, Excuse me, the Skeeter, actually, I named it the Atomic Punk because when I was covering it, that was when there was a Van Halen song called Atomic Punk on, so I actually went up to friends of mine up at Road Rage uh, uh, Graphics up in Spring Grove, Illinois, and uh, and sat down and talked to uh, Mike and Chris and said, hey, this is what I'm looking for. So when you see the graphics on that plane, that was something that I had them design out and print up, and it looked beautiful. But that plane had a, had a little mind of its own. It was one of those... It's one of those planes that every time I took it to fly indoors for, well, I, I can't say every time. The first two times I took it to fly indoors, the maiden flight got hit by somebody, broke the fuselage, had to go home, uncover the fuselage, fix it, recover it. Second time up there, boom, somebody clipped the back of the plane, ripped one of the aileron, uh, elevators off. So I had to fix that. So what I did after that was, uh, I what I ended up doing was I didn't, I decided that I can never finish the plane because every time I finish the plane that something bad's going to happen to it. So I'm like that ball player that has to wear the same pair of socks for every game because he's got this little. So uh, when you see the picture of it, I don't know if I, I'd, I'd, I'll, I could change the picture because I've got a picture lined up that I want to, that I want to put on the video. Uh, the actual wing tips aren't covered. It's just bare balsa and, and when I did that, I flew that plane for three years, never had a problem with it. It ended up dying in a, when I actually had a, a car accident uh, with, with my van. And unfortunately, that was in front of something that was heavy. And when that something heavy started moving, that little plane didn't slow it down a bit. So anyway, so that was it. So uh, to, uh, to move back over to what I've got planned for today's video is... This is the cutting. This this is the actual cutter. Let me take the camera off the mount here so I can walk you through things a little bit better. Sorry about the noise. Alright, here's the actual cutting station. Oh, by the way, Joe, the purple foam, what I was actually doing was, uh, as you can see, I've got... Uh, floats on a wall uh, it's an actually uh, it's a kit for I think 25 size floats it's not a kit it's just a set of drawings and my goal was to see if I can actually make something out of foam and then just throw some uh, three ounce glass around the outside so that's what you saw you actually saw the initial makings of uh, I was trying to uh, set up some uh, uh, some jigs to, to go ahead and run it through the uh, uh, little bandsaw so that's 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 what you called me out on, my friend. Floats. But anyway, if you actually look, see, it was it was set up. It was set up to to match uh, 25 size. So so that's what that was. And uh, it's you know it was a it, it's 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 a neat concept to go ahead and make it in four parts uh, and glue it together. Um, but it was uh, it ended up being a big hassle to do that, and I couldn't come up with. Uh, with a way 
uh, with a way to actually make it uh, so that it was feasible to get the same angles every time. Got a friend Greg that's actually got a CNC machine, and I know he can he can machine up to 12 inches, and these are going to be larger than 12, so that was going to have to be a three piece. And I just said, you know, heck with it. So if 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 I wanted if I want to build a set, I got the plans for wooden ones right there. So, but anyway, oh, just a little heads up, uh, cowling. Uh, fiberglass specialties it actually uh, was going to cost me less money to buy a new one than to actually have what I'm gonna have to do for repairs on this one so that one should be in uh, by about the 4th of January I mean not that I'm not that I need it right now but that's what I decided to do it's, I'm going whole new cowling on it um, it's gonna look the same I still haven't decided if I want to put the uh, the exhaust stacks on it or just leave it with the exhaust coming out the bottom like it like you know like the other like one that wasn't modified i haven't decided to but anyway back to this here even though it's covered with dust that's good that's expensive dust it's a whole lot of spray paint so anyway it's uh, it's the magic inside the box and what this does is this actually what you're doing is you're actually stepping down you're stepping down the 12 you're stepping down I got to get this right you're actually going from 112 or 110 down to 12 volts but you're I got to think about this one or you're actually sorry about this I got I'd have to open take a look I think cause this is an actual a light dimmer I think you're actually dimming down the voltage from 110 down to whatever to feed the you're, you're modifying the actual signal the electrical signal coming out of here because um, I think it I, I think it comes to as AC I'm not sure it's been a long time and uh, it's uh, I, you know it's one of those things that if I really look into it I could tell you exactly how it works but uh, it's, it works so anyway I've got something set up these believe it or not are from from way back when when I was actually making the the mini pink kits because uh, as, as soon as people found out that um, you can uh, you could pretty much just take the take the mini pinks and if you if you know what one looks like you can make one yourself you don't have to buy one um, so it's uh, so we stopped selling them but anyway after it goes through the actual cutter this is what comes out. The flat stock and it's actually got an under camber now the actual cutouts for the under camber is get out of the light here they're actually machined out of uh, eighth inch aluminum and uh, that's the hard part because that is something that I actually uh, doing a little foray into machine work because uh, I got a couple years in the machine shop experience uh, I was actually able to double stack this and I glued them together with super glue scratched out on the on the actual side of it how I wanted a template to be and then I just ran it through this machine this evil little machine uh, bandsaws cut aluminum very nicely um, so it was uh, so it was easy enough and then you just had to come in and sandy it'd be very careful because you'll see how what it does it's a nichrome wire it comes it'll come across the top all the way down to the back and then I'll wait until it drops down under this point and once it drops down under this point then I'll push it back forward again and when it's done if we can get the focus focus yeah, I think that might be focused um, that's what you'll get I've actually uh, got templates for uh, or actual, uh, what do you want, what do you want to call them? The templates, the actual guide. The let's call it templates. Uh, I've got them set up for flat bottom Clark Y, and uh, with a flat bottom, if you actually take the two halves, flip them upside down, glue them together, you got a fully symmetrical airfoil. So um, I didn't want to bring those down because I didn't want to kind of waste time showing you this. So, all right, let me uh, let me get this uh, set up so that you can get a good side view on it and uh, crush fingers and hope it works because I have not fired this thing up in no lying aside probably six plus years. So, I'll be right back. Okay, let's see how good this might work. Let's 
So it may work good and it may not work good at all. All right, so anyway, so you take your piece of foam, slide it in. I've got little, uh, little balsa stops up in here so that way I know how far up it needs to be. So you slide those up till it stops. Take a couple little uh, T-pins. Got little holes drilled in. And this hole is actually below your cut line. So you don't have to worry about it hitting the wire. Move the camera because I don't know. There it is. It's actually not too bad where it's at. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's give it a shot. Keep your fingers crossed. Here we go. Okay, and we're finished. We're coming through the top. It's peeling off, and boom, it's through the top. Okay, if you heard that little twang sound, that's it dropping down to the lower level. Now let's head forward. Now calm down. I know you're getting all excited. So Joe, you doing okay? Need to call an ambulance? Is the heart palpitating? There is the wing. Very easy. Well, that's how that's how everything works out. It works out real nice. Gives you a really nice leading edge. It's you know it's it's all you do is you take a. Uh, I found out a lot of people wanted to hit this with uh, sandpaper. If you actually take a towel like a dish uh, like a dish towel, and go ahead and just rub it back and forth. Because you can do it with your hand too, but if you rub it back and forth, you can actually knock off most of the little fuzzies. But if you do it with a dish towel, you get a lot of it off. And then uh, you know it's actually it's, it's relatively it's a relatively strong structure and for an airplane this light. This would be one half. But what you're doing is you're actually not flying, not saying you couldn't make a plane, a little stub wing plane. Uh, but this was originally cut out to be 18 inches so that when you make a plane none of the planes had 36 inch wingspans um, but what it did is it gave you an opportunity to cut off however much so that's the way it was designed uh, designing the plans um, and it uh, and it worked out very nicely so anyway that was uh, that was that's that's me in the land of foam so uh, bring you up in the air here so if uh, any questions about building uh, wood models building foam uh, I've, I've lived in both worlds and it's uh, it's a uh, it's foam is an interesting place to live uh, you just have to if, if you actually want to make a product uh, with it or make an airplane um, the best thing you could do is at least understand aeronautics 
uh, and what it, what you need to actually uh, put together a plane that's going to fly. Um, and there is plenty of stuff that you can actually uh, learn uh, on the internet uh, through YouTube. Um, but uh, you know, that's it. It's my world. It's a small little world, but uh, but it's my world. So anyway, <laughs> hope y'all enjoyed the <laughs> hope y'all enjoyed the. Uh, uh, the, the coming out party of Bud just uh, and how he has dealt with his uh, addiction to foam and uh, Joe if you uh, if you ever have to, if you ever go into foam rehab uh, just let me know man I'll uh, I'll spot for you so all right <laughs> you kids have a good time and I'll see you at the field <laughs>